I'm joined by Richard uh, from LPCB. Now, this is probably the most adrenaline fueled area uh, here at the exhibit. As well. <laughs> the noisiest as well, very much so. Um, tell me about what you guys do. Um, we're a third party certification and testing body, so we're making sure that the products people invest in to protect their sites actually deliver good security. And in our experience, over 20 years of doing it, 95% of what we see coming into the lab doesn't deliver the protection that people expect. So. Wow, it really doesn't. Yeah. So, so when people buy these security products, they have that, in theory, that safety in the back of their mind that what I bought is going to work and then you prove them otherwise. Yeah, yeah. So we're like a what car of security products. You upset people. Oh, we do, nicely. We've got a lot of supporters. These guys are teaming up with us because they know that it's very important to give that message. Everyone's, do you put your trust in the salesperson? Yes, to a degree, but the LPCB mark extends beyond that to say, yeah, independently, we've put it through its paces and made sure it delivers. On, the, on this work, we're measuring the delay as a site. You've got your detection, you've got your response, but if you haven't got a delay, people can get in and out. So what we're measuring is delay and giving confidence in what tools, what time does people need to invest in as a, as a criminal or a terrorist. I'm looking as my return and um, the risks I'm willing to take like an entrepreneur will do. And we're just elevating elevating that. You need a lot of investment, big tools, a lot of time, puts me at risk, I'm not going to do the job. That's where you get your deterrent and that's really what we're giving people is a mark that says this will deter, this will prevent. So, so let me ask you, do brands come to you and say here's our product, we want you to go test this before we market it? Yeah, yeah, that's very much. 20 years ago there wasn't a demand, um, terrorism issues came about and crime issues and then my um, companies came to realise that the question their customer had is, well, I'm going to spend £100,000 on fencing for all my sites. How do I know this is value for money? We confirm what value for money comes back. So, yes, whether it's Abloy that we're going to see later or Kingsley that we're testing right now, about showing to their potential customer base in the UK and around the world, you buy our product, you can buy it trustworthy. It's in the 5% it will deliver. It's not a 95% that's not going to deliver. And have you noticed that products are getting out of the box, so to speak, better? Are they already aware of that you guys, you know, they must have that back of their mind going, we know this isn't as safe as we'd like to hope. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very much so, but it's still really difficult. I often say to our clients, if I changed jobs and went to work for them, I couldn't engineer. I've done this for 20 years. It's so hard to engineer against it. It's having that independent sight on it. As a designer, you'll have in your head, I'm going to try and stop this, this and this. But we then come in with a different option, as a criminal would. The criminal doesn't sit in a box and told, you can do these certain things. And that's how our mindset works. We are effectively red teaming on every product that we, we see. So. And, and how much has this changed over the years? Because like you say about terrorism and the way that security is, it's changing in technology all of the time. Have you seen a massive change over the last few years? Um, we've seen in terms of the quality of product and performance that people are getting is huge. And I'm quite proud uh, in terms of the UK, although we're an international certification brand, we certify 750 physical security products at the moment. Probably over 650 of those are British, and Britain really does lead in the world in terms of counter-terrorism, whether it's vehicle barriers we're not involved in, but fence lines, doors, etc. And as a result of that, we're seeing governments around the world coming to the UK, coming to shows like IFSEC, to say, we need to invest, and there's good British product there. But of course we're international, so we've got people like Abloy, etc. But they buy into it. They realise people around the world are looking for a brand and a mark that they can trust in. And whether you're American, Australian, Middle Eastern, they're familiar with the LPCB from our years of fire protection certification. They know that when it has that stamp, we've tested it and we've audited it to make sure that what's delivered to market will deliver the protection that we're saying it does. I was, I was going to ask you, is this mark, this certificate that you give them, are more and more people now aware of that mark and, and much more looking for it before they go purchase their product? Yeah, um, in terms of commercial security managers, very much so. That It filters through um, consultants and others. 
police are very aware, we're recognised by Secure by Design, we work closely with Naxo, their guidance, for example, on crowded, terror, crowded places protection post um, uh, London Bridge refers to the LPS standards that we're looking at here, it gives good protection against a marauding attack, for example, so that it filters through, people in the know know, but if you went to a small um, factory owner, he might not know, but his insurer might turn around and go, will give you preferential if you employ uh, uh, deploy products that meet these standards. But um, very much the big users of this are big corporations, utilities, critical infrastructure is where the predominant specification is, where if you have a bad day, you've got a really bad day. And this, uh, as uh, say, the RA said after Brighton bombing, you have to be lucky all the time. We only have to, as terrorists, be lucky some of the time. This is about putting luck, taking that out of the equation, good engineering, making sure you've got the protection, and, and that's what it's recognised for. It, it takes the risk away from the security manager or the consultant. They have to identify the threat. We then prove whether or not it matches that threat. Um, we, like I say, we've got these demonstrations going on behind us. Just before I let you go, there's a guy smacking into a safe with a hammer and a, what looks like a mallet and a chisel thing. How many times has he hit his finger? Um, not often, because health and safety applies to us. It doesn't apply to criminals, unfortunately. <laughs> but, um, so we have to be careful. But the guys, um, we know people that see this sort of thing happening around the world with foreign governments, foreign military, and their response to our guys, the two working together now, are they are the best in the world. Um, because they do this day in, day out on all sorts of products. So, yeah, you might miss something once or twice, <laughs> but generally speaking, our guys are really good. And if they do hit it, um, they learn not to swear in public as well. I was going to say, if I could borrow the one on the left that's hitting it really hard, it's a bank down the road oh, no, from me. No, 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 it doesn't matter. We cut that, cut that, it's fine. Lovely to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you.